Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. We're going to learn about the first topic of SK015 chemistry called matter. There will be three subtopics to be learned. The first one is atoms and molecules. Second is mole concept and the last one going to be stoichiometry. In order for you to clearly see how things are related from subtopic 1.1 to 1.2 and 1.3, please make sure to master all the subtopics according to the sequence. In this video, we're going to cover only for the first subtopic. 1.1 Atoms and Molecules I'm pretty sure you have seen this diagram back in high school, but we're not going to learn about these terms over and over again. I'm showing you this diagram as a quick recap before we learn about more exciting content in matriculation syllabus. You need to know how to differentiate atoms and molecules that make up the matter which contains mass and occupy space, as well as examples of matter like elements and compounds from the stars, so that you won't be dealing with so much confusions afterwards, not just for this chapter, but throughout this course. As suggested by the name of the subtopic itself, our main highlight gonna be atoms and molecules. Atoms are the basic building blocks of all matter. Atoms is so small that we cannot see them. An atom is made up of three parts, proton, neutron, and electrons. Proton is positively charged particle found within the nucleus of an atom. The proton number of an atom is also referred as the atomic number of an element. Next is neutron. Neutron is a neutral part of the nucleus of an atom with no electric charge and the mass is slightly larger than that of the proton. Proton and neutron combined make up the mass of an atom. Atoms of the same element may have different number of neutron. Adding neutron changes the radioactivity of particular elements without changing the charge of an atom. Lastly, electron. Electron is a negatively charged particle found outside the nucleus. They are attached to the proton with electromagnetic force. Electron can be found anywhere in the electron cloud and its path is not fixed. Atoms are natural if the number of protons and electrons are equal. Isotopic notations is a way we can write the symbol of an atom to show the number of protons, neutrons and sometimes electrons that are in it. This notation is particularly important in nuclear chemistry as this chemistry interested mainly in the nucleus. Here we've got a couple of things in these notations. First, we got this letter X symbolizes the element of an atom we are dealing with. Then we have this letter Z represent the number of proton or atomic number. Lastly, we have this letter A. It is a nucleon number, also known as mass number, which is a number of proton plus number of neutrons. Don't make a mistake and think that this is going to be the number of neutron. Let's look at this one example of chlorine. Chlorine given here is a neutral atom because they got no charge present in the notations. So from these notations, we could quickly extract the information regarding the three subatomic particles, proton, neutrons, and electrons we have discussed earlier. Proton number of chlorine will depend on the Z, which is 17. Number of neutron can be determined by subtracting Z from A which is going to be 18, comes from this 35 minus 17. As for the number of electrons, since this is neutral atom, the number will be the same as Z, which is 17. Atoms that has an excess or deficit number of electrons are known as ion. Ionic charge atom will only affect the number of electrons present. If you've got a neutral atom, the number of electrons will be the same as the number of protons. Meanwhile, if you have charged ion, the number of electrons will no longer the same as the number of protons. You either need to add or subtract the number of electrons according to the charge presence. To conclude, having cat ion as in positive charge means your atom got more protons than electrons, so you need to subtract the charge from Z. Having an ion as a negative charge means your atom got less proton than electron, so you need to add the charge to the Z. Let's try this one question involving ionic charge of magnesium. So the question is going to be, how many protons, neutrons and electrons are in the magnesium ion isotopes? So from the notations, we could already point out the number of proton, also the nucleon number. This 2 plus charge suggests that our number of electrons will not be the same as the number of proton. 
So the proton number of magnesium ion will solely depend on Z, which is 12. The number of neutrons can be determined by subtracting 12 from 25, which is going to be 13 in this case. As for the number of electrons, since we got positive charge present, number of electrons will reduce by 2 from proton number. Therefore, 12 minus 2 equal to 10. Each element in the predict table has its own atomic mass. This mass can be found underneath the element signs on the predict table. When discussing mass of an atom, we often relate it to carbon-12 element as reference due to the nature of atom that is so small in size, so they kind of need to rely on the mass of element that is almost stable, which in this case, the carbon-12. And then, the atomic mass is an average, so the average of masses of different atoms. But the average we're talking about is not the same as the one you probably learned in maths, where you simply add everything and divide it by how many of them present. Average atomic mass is about weighted average of isotopes present. As you have learned in high school, isotope is atom with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Let's take oxygen as an example. We often heard oxygen 16, but little that we know, there are two other isotopes of oxygen 17 and oxygen 18. The number written on the first line underneath the element is the atomic mass with unit AMU or just U. While the second line represents their abundances, how common these isotopes can be found. So out of these three isotopes, we are looking for only one atomic mass that is most common could be found because only one number will be represented on predictable for each element. To calculate average atomic mass, you need to use this formula. Please take note while you are still at the beginning of the semester because this is going to be the first formula to be remembered. Since it's just an evolution from atomic mass to average atomic mass, and by substituting value into the formula, we know the intensity or abundance got no units, so we can cancel them out like this. So we are left with only isotopic mass. Hence, the unit will remain as AMU or U depending on the questions. As for abundances, there will be three types altogether. Percentage up to 100, decimal point and ratio up to 1. There will be two forms of information given regarding atomic mass questions. It's either they give you this mass spec diagram or statement like this or both. They will eventually give you exactly the same information about their abundances and isotopic mass. So this two info is about chlorine isotopes. As for this diagram, we know that the percentage abundance was given at the y-axis and isotopic mass at the x-axis. We could point out that chlorine-35 got 75% abundance and chlorine-37 got 25% abundance. While for the statement given, it tells us that chlorine-35 with isotopic mass of 34.96898 AMU has the abundances of 75.77% while chlorine-37 with isotopic mass of 36.9659 AMU has 24.23%. If the questions provide you both diagram and statement, always use the most accurate value as in the statement to be inserted into the formula. Apart from average atomic mass, we got another term of mass need to be learned called relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. The only difference between these two terms is one is atom, another one is molecule. Everything else is the same. So the average atomic mass we have discussed earlier with unit need to rely on the 1 12th of the mass of an atom carbon 12 also with unit. So we can cancel this unit out resulting the relative atomic mass with no unit. So, if the question asks for relative atomic mass, you might need to further continue with this formula in order to obtain marks. We will look at form of questions might be asked during exams. The questions can ask you to find the average of relative mass or their abundances or even the isotopic mass. 
As long as you know the formula, then you can always find the answer by rearranging it according to the questions. I've divided it into three types of abundances. For percentage abundance, this is the most common questions being asked. You are given two isotopes of nitrogen, nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15, with specific AMU. Take note on this number. You are also be given the average atomic mass of 14.0067 AMU. What's left is only the percentage abundance. Don't panic as answer to these questions can be determined from the formula. But before you substitute the value given into the formula, you need to first clearly define the abundance of both isotopes using unknowns. So for this case, I'll use X and Y. So you need to first write let X equal to percentage of nitrogen 14 and Y equal to percentage of nitrogen 15. You might need to rely these two unknowns to a reference of 100% and immediately denote this as the first equations as we're going to use only one unknown at a time. Then, please always write the general equations before substituting the value because sometimes marks will be given to the correct general equations if your substitutions happen to be wrong or vice versa. You can choose either to write this or this. Both will be accepted. Substitute the value accordingly and since we already have all of them, this will lead you to the second equations. Perform simultaneous equations by substituting equations 1 into equations 2. You will be left with only unknown y. Hence, you've got the value of y equal to 0.36. From y, you can find x of 99.64. Will this value be accepted as final answer? No. You have to add a final sentence of percentage abundance of each species as these questions ask for percentage. So you must expect the final answer to have percent in it. Leaving only 0.36 and 99.64 without percent won't be rewarded marks. The diagram tells you information regarding magnesium atom. There are basically four isotopes present, magnesium-23, magnesium-24, magnesium-25, and magnesium-26. But only three isotopes, 24, 25, and 26, have significant intensity. We could say that the intensity is on the decimal point because the total abundance is not equal to 100, so they are not percentage, and it is not equal to 1 as well, so they are not ratio. Therefore, they are decimal point abundance. Let's recall the formula to calculate the average atomic mass. We have the sum of intensity times isotopic mass divided by intensity. When we say sum, means the intensity times isotopic mass belong to individual species before you sum everything up. So as magnesium-24, its intensity is 63, followed by magnesium-25 of 8.1 intensity, and lastly magnesium-26 with 9.10 intensity. Please put a bracket for each species to avoid board mass confusions. Then divide it by the total of intensity. Therefore, the average atomic mass is 24.3 AMU. No unit, no marks for average atomic mass. Next, we will classify this example as part of ratio abundance as stated in the questions ratio of relative abundance given to you two species x21 and x22 with only one value of 1.555. As we discussed earlier, ratio must be up to 1. Also given the atomic mass for both species in AMU, so if you have this specific number, use this in your calculations. Let's start with general equations in order for you to find the average atomic mass. So we have these general equations. And then for 1.555 given to stand alone like this, there must be denominator of 1 to rely on. Hence, we could say that x21 has abundance of 1.555 while x22 has abundance of 1.000. So you need to keep the decimal point according to the questions given. So like this, so we have this amount of decimal point. Then you can substitute all the value into the equations, which will give you final answer of 21.4 AMU. When working on the calculations, 
you must always have the subject and equal, not just equal without subject. As for subtopic 1.1, we're going to cover for a two hours tutorial. So please attempt this tutorial on your own before coming to the class. We're going to discuss the answer in class. Thank you, everyone.